Another classic in generative art are fractals. Fractals are structures that have a self-replicating property to them. So they start out somewhere, and then on ever greater levels of detail, it's a pattern that repeats itself. And here you can see an example of a fractal tree. So we start at the bottom, and then we move up that tree, and then we split that tree in two. And from this point onwards, we sort of repeat this pattern of moving up, splitting, moving up each of the two splits, and doing that over and over and over again. And every time we do that, we introduce a little bit of randomness. So you notice that these splits, it's not always the same angle. Sometimes it's a bit more, sometimes it's a bit less. And we're reducing the, the length of these branches as we're going up the tree, and we are making them thinner and thinner. And the result well, the result are these pretty darn realistic looking trees that have a certain organic quality to them. And if you like that sort of thing, well, let's head over to Python and get coding. So I'm in a new script, which I call tree.py. Same setup as always, we import the turtle, we import our theme, we have our random module, and down here we got everything to exit out of our canvas once we're done with the drawing. Now, what we'll do here is we'll define a function, which I'll simply call grow. And this will be the function to grow the tree. Now, since we're dealing with recursion here, that function will call upon itself. What is that function? And you'll see that in a minute. Now, what does that function have in terms of its parameters? Well, there's got to be a length. So every branch of that tree has a certain length. And then there's some factor by which we are going to decrease the length as we are moving up that tree. And then there's also an angle. That's the angle in when we are splitting that branch at which the two new branches are branching out from their parent branch, so to speak. And then lastly, we'll also introduce a little bit of noise, in which, which will at first initialize to zero. So this will be the parameters that we are dealing with. And the important thing is that at some point, we, we got to stop um, doing this whole thing. Otherwise, that function would, you know, keep on calling itself forever and our computer would crash. So the first thing that we'll do here is we'll say if length is greater than 10, only then are we here, are we going to do anything of, of, of what's going to follow, right? Of what follows. If the length is too small, if you're below 10, then this function will terminate. But while the length is less than 10, well, we'll just keep on going with growing the tree. Now we'll just move forward. So let's just run this and see what happens. So right now, we don't see anything. That's because we're just moving, we are not really drawing anything. Right? Well, no, 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 <laughs> we're moving. That's the thing. We are not calling the function, right? <laughs> so let's go down here and let's just say, um, we lift up our pen. We go to the bottom of the canvas. Um, so let's go to zero and let's make this minus 400, not all the way minus 500, but minus 400. And then we put down the pen. And then we'll say, the turtle originally is facing to the right, so let's turn this by 90 degrees left so that it's facing upwards. And then we can say, grow that tree. And let's start with a length of 150. And we'll just, you know, doesn't really matter what we, what we put in here because we're not using it. And you can see the turtle moved down and then it moved back up. And I forgot to set my theme. so. Set the theme, and there we go. So we've just drawn this little line here. Nothing fancy about this. So let's see what happens if we were to call that function again, but important, we gotta decrease that length. So we'll just say that we have a new length, which is equal to, well, the original length, time the decrease factor, and then we pass that into here. New length, the decrease, decrease angle and that noise. And now down here, don't pick one, pick something like 0.8. And then you can see that we are drawing a straight line, it gets shorter and shorter, and at some point it stops because that's when the next, the next bit of the tree would be less, in length would be less than 10, and then the function terminates. Okay, so now we are just growing, a, a, a branch is just going 
perfectly straight up. But of course, we want this to be um, to branch out at some point, right? So what we'll do is um, after we moved forward, that's the first thing. We'll say after we have the new length, we'll say there's an angle to the left, angle left, and there's an angle to the right. For now, we'll just set both of these to um, two perfectly fine numbers, which is angle <laughs> and angle. And then we'll say that we'll turn by the angle to the left. We turn to the left, the angle of the left, that sounds nice. And then we're growing this new branch. And then we're turning right that particular angle so that we are back in the original position. And after that, we will do this once more, but this time we are going right by the angle right and we are going left by the angle right. So now we're going in the opposite direction and let's run this and see what happens. Um, it's still a perfectly straight line because the angle is just zero. So let's make this a 30 degree angle. And boom, now that's a pretty weird looking tree. We're going here, moving left, and then, well, it's kind of, we are going left a bunch of times. And then notice here how we are now um, also introducing a bunch of right turns. And the problem is we are not going back. So once we've drawn that left branch, before we go into the next level of recursion, we gotta go back and go back up here to draw the other part. So a critical part of, oh, wrong script. A critical part of this um, recursive tree here, this fractal tree, is that at the end we go back and we go back our original length. So let's run this once more and boom, there it is. This is our first fractal tree. Now right now this is what I would call a perfectly symmetrical tree. I mean it might be, it is pretty to look at. It is interesting certainly because we can play around with this. I mean we could now say Let's, let's make this 200 and see what happens. And boom, now it's a bit too large. So we might say, well, we got to shrink this faster. Now it looks like this. Now it's almost too small. So let's make this 0.6 and now 0.7. And you can really see how, how this grows and how we can play around with this. We could say, let's start with a 50 degree angle. Now this is interesting. The tree, it, it's, it's almost like hexagons. It's, it's really interesting to look at, but it's not really realistic, right? So, I mean, you could also go for it for 90 degrees. Look at this. This is also a fractal tree. This is a very particular fractal tree. Very interesting pattern, but not what we are looking for. We want to have a realistic looking, realistic looking tree. So let's go back to um, 30. Now, the first thing that we have to do is we have to we have to sort of introduce some noise concerning how far up we are going each time because now it's just going, you know, whatever whatever decrease of the of the parent level of the parent branch length, and this is just perfectly symmetrical. So let's introduce some some bit of a margin error here. And what we'll do after we create the new length, we'll say if noise is greater than zero. So if that is the case, we'll say new length. Um, let's say plus equal random.uniform, um, 0 0.9 and 1.1. Well, not plus equal, times equal. And yeah, this looks a bit weird because noise is zero and here we're saying it's greater than zero, but then we're not using it. But later on, I'm going to be using that same noise to also alter the angle. But for now, let's just leave it at, at this and look at the result. Now, nothing has changed because noise is still equal to zero. We haven't specified anything. So let's just make it one. Doesn't matter for now. And now you can see that there is a bit of an offset. So here you can see that the right hand side of the trees is slightly larger than the left. And this is starting to look slightly more realistic. Let's go back to 150, make this 180 so that we are going deeper into the tree. And okay, this is too much. Let's make this maybe 20. And yeah, there we go. Now you can see how this sort of is developing an organic quality to it. The only problem is that the angles are still too symmetrical. But you can see that the tree in its by itself does have a certain bit of asymmetry to it already. Anyway, let's make the angles random as well. So we'll just say random 
and we'll just add some white noise. So we'll say random gauss and we'll add in that noise. So plus random noise, same thing down here. And now, well, if we go for one, then it's not going to be a lot. So let's maybe add noise of 10. And there we go. So this is sort of a tree that's really pushed over from the wind. So let's simulate another one. There we go. Now this is starting to look like something that you might see in, in, in the real world. Something that grows in your garden, okay? Next up, um, to make this look less like, you know, some weed or some kind of grass, let's, let's make the stem a little thicker and then have the branches decrease in width as we approach the top of the tree. And we can do that, well, we just go up here, when we move forward for the first time, we'll say that the width is equal to the length divided by 10. And then this will automatically shrink the tree. So we start at a, with a very thick branch at the very bottom, the trunk, the stem of the tree. And then as we move up, it becomes thinner and thinner. And the result looks fairly realistic, I would say. So this is, I think this is pretty good, actually. Okay, now it's, I think it's just time to play around with, with different trees. So we could, for example, grow a very narrow tree. And yeah, so let's set this to 10. It's an angle of 10, maybe even this to zero, so no noise. And now you can see how it's like this. I mean, you wouldn't see anything like that in nature. Um, it's, 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 you know, it's not a real tree. But if we introduced some, some noise to it, you might say, okay, now it's it's kind of like it, it's a plant. You could you could imagine seeing something like this, and this is now very narrow because this is such a small angle. But if we increase this to say twenty, now it's branching branching out a little, and if we increase this further, say we made it forty, then you know it, we get into this interesting artsy stuff but not realistic, not what we would see in the natural world, but it's still generative art. And it's, I think, pretty interesting to look at. You know what? Let's make this eight five and see how this is now super large and it should fill up the entire canvas. And it's taken the computer quite some time to prepare this image because it takes some time before the recursion actually hits the, you know, hits the boundary of what we said the length must be greater than 10. And this is really taking some time now. Okay, so I had to exit out of this because it was taking forever. Let's let's incre uh, decrease this to 100 and try again with 85. And let's see if that is any better. The tree grows and grows and grows and grows. Still taking a pretty long time. So maybe this is just too much. I'm going to go with 80 here. Now it's too small because, well, 150 was the better choice given our canvas size. There we go. But we want to have more noise to this. So let's make this 10. There we go. And set this back to maybe 30, maybe even less, maybe 25. And there we go. This is now what a realistically looking tree may look like. And I think well, let's just let's just play around with some coloring. So what we might do here um, is we'll say in our set theme, um, function, we'll say the pen color is equal to, so let's make this something rather reddish. So we'll say 0.8 and then we'll have two smaller numbers here. I'm just really picking these numbers out of a hat. And we'll say that the, the canvas color, which is on what we're drawing, we'll make this a dark blue. So let's make this two small, well, two rather small numbers and then something slightly larger for the blue value. We draw this and there we go. It's actually sort of purple and a, well, what's that, peach or salmon on a purple background. But yeah, you can play around with this, have fun exploring this, play around with the trees, go for, you know, extremely weird numbers, go for an angle that's greater than 90 degrees, go for 120, see what happens. Um, you get this at some point, of course, it sort of stops, maybe 91. There we go. That's, that's still pretty interesting stuff. But anyway, have fun playing around with that. For now, we'll stick with 20 degrees. That gives us this shape. Looks like a real tree. See you in the next video.